Muy buenas noches con todos. Les saluda Sandra Flores de Puerto Rico. Les damos la bienvenida a este nuevo webinar de exportador del mercado japonés para las prendas de alpaca. A continuación, le eh, damos pase al señor Fernando Alvareda de la Oficina Comercial de Tokio, que dará una introducción a los compradores y al webinar. Muchas gracias. Eh, buenos días y buenas noches allá en Perú. Eh, soy Fernando Alvareda, consejero comercial del Perú en, en Japón, aquí en la ciudad de Tokio. Y el día de hoy tenemos el agrado de estar con ustedes justamente para hacer nuestra presentación sobre el, el mercado de confecciones eh, de alpaca en, en Japón. Eh, como expositores tenemos a la señorita Ayako. Ella es la directora ejecutiva y fundadora de la empresa Maite Company Limited. Es una empresa que está basada aquí en Tokio precisamente y fue creada en el año 2012. Esta empresa produce, importa y distribuye prendas de vestir de alpaca principalmente. Otras actividades que desarrolla también esta, esta compañía es la de consultoría y organización de eventos. Entre los productos que ellas eh, tienen, en, en realidad dentro de lo que ellas están vendiendo, son prendas modernas, básicas para mujeres que trabajan. Tiene una tienda de venta también en línea y eh, tiene una serie de productos que ella diseña. Eh, Ayako empezó trabajando con un grupo de señoras de Carabahillo, en Lima, que producían prendas de alpaca a mano desde 2013. Y luego, en todo caso, ha ido incorporando otros talleres de, artesanales de producción justamente de diferentes tipos de prendas de vestir. El segundo expositor es el señor Naoto Yokoyama. Él es el gerente de desarrollo de productos de la empresa Yalux Style. Esta empresa está establecida desde 1989, pero inicialmente con el nombre de Glenfield Corporation uh, y cambió luego, posteriormente, hace un par de años, a Yalux Style. Esta es una empresa subsidiaria de la corporación Yalux, con que tiene diferentes unidades de negocios, eh, desde tanto de servicios de aviación y aeropuertos, seguros, inmobiliaria, distribución de productos, administración de tiendas duty free en aeropuertos, entre otros. Yalux Style importa y distribuye productos eh, de consumo, especialmente prendas de vestir. Eh, tiene una serie de marcas que en todo caso ellos distribuyen a grandes tiendas de departamentos aquí en Japón, eh, entre las que se encuentra Orise, Flying Horse, Snobbest y British Green. Desarrolla negocios con la aerolínea Japan Airlines, con eh, las revistas JAL Shops y JAL Inflights. Eh, también... Eh, eh, venden en línea a través de su tienda Glencheck. Eh, bueno, en todo caso, eh, hacemos pase ahora a, a Ayako para que empiece precisamente con este webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Ayako. Nice to introduce you to the uh, people here in, in Peru. And, uh, well, please just start with your presentation. Soy Ayako. Eh, hoy voy a hablar de la industrial textil, industrial apparel la oportunidad de eh, ropa eh, en Japón con COVID-19. Uh, I'm going to change to English now. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm going to, um, I said the trend, new trend included in this uh, Included this uh, presentation, but I would like to emphasize that uh, current situation quite difficult to see the trends, and no one actually uh, can see the trends. So I would like to share some new things coming up here in Japan as a reference. So at the beginning, I would like to start with current situation of uh, in terms of the sales. In, to in Japan. Uh, this is uh, March. Uh, the upper companies uh, basically decreased the sales to 20 to 40 percent compared to the previous years and department stores also. And in April, because of this uh, quarantine, not very strict quarantine here in Japan, but uh, even though the sales decreased to 50 to 60 percent for upper companies, uh, even the giant uh, upper brands, and the department stores, in Japan department stores uh, 
for especially the higher end market, but they had to close the shop, so their sales decreased uh, even bigger, 70 to 90 percent. So uh, we see uh, everywhere it's happening that the online sales, EC sales, e-commerce is increasing. Uh, in basically it's around 20 percent 20 to 30 percent increased in terms of the ec sales however the spending or per customers is decreasing a little and this is uh the left side is uh, upper e-commerce and the right side is upper accessories e-commerce and both are quite similar so the sales increased 20 percent uh so it's increasing but not enough to cover the actual like uh, total sales and it's going to increase i think however the spending per customer is uh, still uh kind of low i would like to share some customer behavior change under COVID 19 and this is uh we need to think for short term and mid long term and I think we are now bit kind of mid long term, or if we, we could say the between short mid term and mid long term. So the beginning, uh, we cannot go out. The customer cannot go out even if they want to go for shopping. And also because we cannot go out, we don't have to buy something like new clothes or uh, fancy clothes for going out. So the less time for going out affect the beginning. And then uh, economical and also less spending. So um, as I said, the upper middle class are not going out much. And so the spending itself is going tighter. And then the EC shopping increase and it will connect to more digital engagement. People are spending more time for like social network or online video. And those are now their leisure time. And then, uh, recently it's happening is that a uh, higher evaluation on social responsibility so that now customers want to support the companies for the uh, companies or organizations or individuals that they are trying to do something for society um like uh, helping uh the doctors or hospitals in these situations or like some donations for the the people especially in needs so this is a brief example is like uh, the Uniqlo is the biggest apparel company in Japan. They like donated the mask and also clothing and also uh, the money itself for donation. And some new uh, kind, uh, kind of like new brand, uh, they uh, beyond the leaf, they are a uh, hand knit kind of uh, back brand. And they donate the mask and the handmade mask and the, the sales goes to the organization non-profit organization that's supporting for this uh hospital and doctors and some companies are doing like a uh, event for kids staying at home and like uh, collect the kid pictures and then they are going to use that picture for the product in a few months or uh simply the company some companies donate the percentage of their sales now to the organization non-profit then uh this is a customer mind change so in japan the fuyo fukyu mean uh, is like non-essential and non-urgent this was uh kind of everywhere they spread it and then now still this is uh the customer's mind the basic so um but then gradually we uh, tend to see more for uh, safety and saving and also like uh, inside house, inside home and social cooperation. So they, those four, I think, uh, is the kind of like base uh, feeling of the customers. And then, um, of course, uh, we started to look for something new and also like easy access for shopping or uh, new technology is coming up and of course our lifestyle changed we are staying at home more and so new needs and want will come up so now um so briefly what i 
meant for those uh, four points of the customer's mind is that uh, one is safety. So it's like healthcare and wellness. Like uh, this industry, these categories are uh, huge attention now. Uh, especially like mask. Uh, in Japan, it's quite common to wear mask even before COVID-19. So now it, what is happening is that um, there are many varieties of mask. And of course, we use every day. Uh, so we want to change it. We want to have fun with it. So like uh, some companies, some factories, they are making with uh, extra fine merino or like denim or like uh, uh, it's going to be summer here in Japan. So they use like linen or like washes the paper fiber and using copper and or like the strong one with cordula nylon. So these are healthcare related products and also like uh, more people are doing exercise at home and we care about health, our health, how to keep up a uh, healthy lifestyle and also like uh, strong, uh, make our kind of uh, immune system stay strong. So we care more, like we want to relax and like uh, we don't want to get stress at home. So these are the kind of biggest uh, uh, interest for the many people. And then the saving is still uh, there. So like uh, lots of shops are doing uh, sales and also like nowadays the second hand market is growing. And however, um, gradually, of course, like uh, all many companies cannot do this way. So anyway, the many buyers will need to find a way to sell like uh, higher price on products. But this is still kind of quite strong for the customers. And then uh, inside house, so we stay at home more. So we want to make our home more comfortable and like interior, like, uh, or like including like blanket textiles and also like for the sleeping, uh, how can we good, how can we have good sleep? And also people start to do more gardening and this kind of things. So people's behavior is changing. And then uh, last point is social cooperation. As I briefly said before, the customers want more, uh, want companies uh, to be more kind of helpful for society. And so those, uh, I think you may have heard the SDGs, Social Development Goals uh, under United Nations. And so for like poverty issue, education issues, uh, human agenda issues and environmental issues. So for those uh, social and also environmental impact, uh, customers are more now in, have interest and they want to support for those companies. And so, uh, and especially in Japan and we want kind of customers want clear information with proof that um so like uh, not just by saying we are good like we are environmentally friendly company uh not only that we want to know what exactly uh, you're doing the companies are doing and with is uh if possible with certificate so that it can prove and customer can feel like uh, um, can have confidence to to support those companies by shopping also. And then uh, lastly, I uh, want to share some new uh, things coming up. Um, so as you, you know, we stay at home, we work at home and we talk to friends at home. So now everything kind of uh, through Zoom or like uh, this uh, Google and tech related uh, way of communication. And it comes, uh, so nowadays many people, uh, my friends are also saying that um, we just need to wear tops. We just need to uh, change the tops. 
clothing. So, um, and then especially because we are at home and we want something comfortable. Uh, so like comfortable clothing and also like tops are the high attention now. And then even some like YouTubers or celebrities, uh, I mean in influencers, they are also started to share like uh, the tips for how you look good on the camera and that kind of things. So probably as uh, some of you may already know that many Japanese like very simple clothes and um, kind of like gray, navy, uh, those colors were quite popular. However, I think it may change from now that we want something more bright color or like more decorative uh, designs because of this um, current uh, way of living. And yeah. And then uh, if this lifestyle continues, already uh, um, it's coming summer here in Japan and then people are worrying that we need to use like air conditioning because Japan, it's very hot and very humid. And so we have air conditioning, but we want to save energy because we are staying at home and then all the time we are using it. And then it will go like uh, the electricity uh, cost will increase a lot. So people are worrying about it. So what if this continues to winter? Then I thought we want to save energy to use um, the heaters. So I thought like this could be a good opportunity for the companies producing their alpaca textile apparel items that like uh, we can wear comfort clothes and at the same time um, the energy for heating the room could be reduced. So this is I I, I think I want to support this uh, movement. And then last uh, is that this is very new and this is called a uh, virtual market. And this is like uh, with uh, actually avatars, you go around the city, you go, you go around market. This was this year, it was held uh, the end of April to the beginning of May. And more than, this was actually fourth in the fourth time and then this uh, more than 500,000 visitors came in. And majorities are from the half from United States and about half from Japan. And then this time, uh, new uh, things were like the companies, big companies, including retailers started to join. And so the virtual market, so there is the like virtual world there inside of the the computer internet and you can control the avatar to go around and to chat to talk and actually this is a convenience store uh this is very very much like real convenience store in japan and you can go around and then you can buy it uh, and then here this was isetang is the one of the most uh the biggest uh, department store in Japan. So like you control your avatar and you can enter the store and not many, this is, still, this is new, so not many, but there are some like items, products, and then you can choose, you can, you control your avatar to choose to see the design, these kind of things. And then actually you can buy it now for avatar. But gradually, what they're trying to do is they want to, the convenience store also same, they want to connect this uh, virtual and reality. So if you buy this online, I mean through Avatar, you can actually get the physically physical product also later. That's what they are trying to do in future. Now still not yet, but uh, only you can buy for Avatar but it's happening. And we go, this is uh, also younger fashion brand and they are also joining it. And they actually already started to use in the shop. And 
like uh, the people staying at home can control avatar and then that avatar it uh, they, they can see the shop in uh through avatar's eye and uh, actually the shop assistant shop people they are in the shop the uh, real shop but they can also see the customer through avatar and then this kind of communication uh kind of just started and still not yet um uh, uh not yet majority of course like only a few people started to see this but uh it might be something new opportunity in the future so this is very like a new thing so no no uh i cannot say that's trend but and for the finally i'd like to um say a little bit about if your companies are already working with buyers in japan and in this current situation we uh, the communication is quite difficult so and especially we cannot like uh, receive samples uh, it takes much longer i think now to receive sample and of course we cannot visit the factory or the suppliers even though we want so um i think using the visual image is very important and and uh, not just adding the visual uh image it needs to be very clear and also useful so um this is brief suggestion if your companies are already working with japan and i think most and even for yeah even for this uh, especially because of this and um, these circumstances um we the buyers also want more kind of uh, to know the new ideas or like opportunities so i think um it's good time to kind of come up with new ideas and also like uh, like uh, make very visual and detailed uh, informations like uh, profiles or presentation and that will be i think uh it's useful japanese buyer also so that's all for me thank you gracias thank you very much ayako it was very interesting to know about the trends that presently are here in japan and also the new ones this kind of the avatar i think it's it's really really interesting uh, I don't know when they are going to develop this kind of technology so we can all just have our avatars and we can go to these virtual stores. But it's, it's, it's interesting to know how the future comes. Also, it's very interesting what you said about the trends regarding the sustainability, sustainability of, and also how the people are uh, caring more about the rest and also social responsibility. So I think it's very important that the people then can just develop this kind of stories in their, in their product so they can just also sell better and they can communicate better. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, pass uh, to uh, yeah, Naoto uh, so he can talk about his experience in the Japanese market. Hello, hello everyone. Um, I don't know if you can see me, but uh, uh, let me just uh, explain a bit about uh, my company first. Um, I think uh, Mr. Alvareda has already uh, giving you some information, but uh, due to the nature of what we do, um, I think it's important for me to uh, have a little intro about my uh, company. And then we'll move on to the uh, business, um, the current business that we have, um, and then to the COVID-19, and then to the future plan that uh, we try to have or we try to uh, manage after this COVID-19. Hope you guys can hear me. Um, uh, again, my name is Naoto Yokoyama. Uh, I work at a company called uh, Jelux Style, uh, which is based in uh, Tokyo. Um, a bit about my, co about my company. Uh, Jelux Style is a company that uh, was founded in 1989. Uh, primary company name was Glenfield, uh, which some people might imagine England as we actually started from uh, important goods from England mainly. 
uh, we have majority of products, but uh, leather was uh, what we specialized in first. Uh, so we have uh, many wallets, uh, bags, uh, smaller, uh, small leather uh, products to start with. Uh, it gradually uh, evolved into making these leather products by ourselves uh, using our partner factories uh, around the world. Uh, but we never uh, actually stopped there. Uh, we kept on seeking uh, great products, which uh, eventually led us to distributor as well. Uh, right now, we have many uh, brands that we distribute within Japan uh, from products around the world. Uh, in 2015, uh, our current parent company called Jelux uh, purchased Glenfield, uh, which eventually led us to uh, change our company name to Jelux Style. Uh, this is where our current strong point comes in. Uh, Jelux is a trading company which has a DNA of Sojitsu, uh, which is one of the top trading company in Japan. Uh, and Japan Airlines, as a lot of uh, you guys already may know, um, it's an airline company that represents the nation. Uh, this company changed a uh, list to an access to airline related business. Uh, such as in-flight business, uh, duty-free business in airports, uh, JAL catalog, Japan airline website, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the amount and unique customers that Japan Airline have boosted, up, boosted us up to where uh, we could not access. So right now we consider ourselves a manufacturer, a distributor, a wholesaler, which has access to website business uh, catalog business and airline business, and uh, last but not least, airport businesses. Uh, okay, uh, enough with my boring uh, company explanation. Uh, let me get into uh, what we do within the apparel business. Uh, roughly 2018, uh, we imported around 1.3 million US dollars in apparel. Uh, to break that down, 2% of the amount will be for retail shops, 14% uh, are for websites, uh, and last but not least, 84% uh, uh, for catalog orders. Uh, within this amount, uh, 400,000 US dollars uh, was alpaca related product from Peru. Uh, to break that down, also 1% uh, for retail. 5% for websites and 94% uh, uh, for catalogs. Uh, 2019, we imported around 1.2 million US dollars in Afro, which breaks down to 5% retail, 19% website, and 76% catalog. Uh, we haven't really changed the importing amount, uh, but the shares begin to show how the website is booming in recent years. In my opinion, uh, many websites are okay to refund and uh, easy to access now. So all of you already may know this will be a sector that we have to strengthen. The breakdown of what kind of apparel we import, uh, this ratio does not change with 2018, 2019, uh, which is 50% uh, cardigans, 29% uh, sweaters, and 18% vests, and 4% uh, uh, mufflers. Uh, yes, our majority sales for alpaca apparels are based on fall and winter period. Uh, 2019, uh, we didn't really have a cold winter since a lot of the days were warmer than usual. Uh, we had difficulties selling these items. We ex uh, expect the same uh, with 2020 uh, fall and winter, uh, despite the COVID-19. Uh, of course, uh, we do have issues uh, that comes up occasionally, like uh, delivery issues, uh, payment issues, uh, quality issues. Um, last year, we faced mass delivery issues for uh, factory in Peru, uh, which actually caused us to um, pay penalty fees for our customers. Uh, also, a payment issue uh, we face sometimes. Uh, despite our uh, contract, we get many uh, demands for earlier payments. Um, but these problems we have, um, these uh, problems we have deeper communication and address uh, the issues, but quality control, we really keep uh, things tight. As you know, uh, Japanese customers are very strict and really hard to uh, do business with. Uh, once we had issue with um, the sweater that had needles and a bunch of holes, 
Uh, and this was not just, you know, one or two. It was like 70% of what we had uh, delivered. Um, I think but that was the most stressful time of the year it was for me. But uh, these things happened and uh, we need to deal with it. So after this difficult time of COVID-19, uh, we plan to uh, visit Peru uh, so that we can have more understanding of uh, each other. And I basically think that's an important part of the business. And I think uh, everyone in Peru is doing their best and uh, hopefully we could um, uh, interact more uh, in a deeper way. Uh, moving to COVID-19, um, the current situation in Japan uh, about COVID-19 Government has declared emergency on April 7th. Uh, we've been told to stay home uh, as much as we can. Uh, the difference between other countries is that we can go outside, uh, we can ride trains, uh, we could go out to the mall. Um, and at the time, we could even eat at McDonald's. Um, of course, many of the stores are closing now and uh, nothing to do even if we go out. Uh, so uh, eventually, a lot of us are now staying home, uh, working from home. Uh, people who are risking their lives by working in facilities that uh, we need to continue, our lives are stressed out. I think um, they need a lot of help. Um, I believe this is the same with other countries also. So how did this COVID-19 change us? Uh, one obvious difference is we all felt that the importance of staying sanitized, uh, washing our hands. Uh, we don't want to touch unnecessary things. Uh, we don't want to spread the virus ourselves, uh, which is causing less interactions with other people, such as your friends and families. This clearly caused people to uh, buy more on online. Uh, of course, this was a trend uh, that we had before COVID-19, uh, but it has accelerated after the virus. Uh, so what are people buying on online right now? So I don't have a nationwide statistics, but looking into our website and our parent uh, company website, uh, food and beverages uh, were the most sector that had uh, sales increased. Uh, within that 70% 70, uh, 70 are essential products such as water. 30% uh, are luxury products uh, such as good steak meat or marine products. Looking at the apparel uh, sales, we see slight sales increase, but uh, not enough to determine the situation. Uh, a lot of our customers voice, uh, they are still cautious about buying products that has sizes and color varieties and they can't experience it since they're not in the store right now. I believe this leads to uh, Ayako-san's um, virtual uh, buying experience. Uh, but we feel the need to interact with them more directly such as uh, setting up a dial for a customer to talk about the products, uh, such as how the texture feels or how the size looks. Uh, this is what we are actually trying to do right now, um, try to receive more calls from uh, customers. But I believe it would be uh, a bit busy because a lot of customers might be calling. So we're seeking other ways like uh, using a, a line or, or SMS or um, wherever we can use to uh, reach them out. Japan might uh, release the emergency declaration within this month. Um, Tokyo and prefectures around Tokyo may take a bit more time, but the government has taken steps to forward uh, with the economy again. Uh, for a few months, I believe uh, we have to adjust to the world uh, of economy that COVID-19 has given us, uh, given to us. Uh, but after, uh, after that, hopefully the borders will be open again. And that's when I think our company should invest and be aggressive toward customers. Um, so what is the actual plan that we as Jeduk Style have and what we can only provide? Um, this, uh, we are planning to use our strong point, uh, which is airport and uh, airline related business. Uh, when airport and airline uh, business comes back, uh, which it 
will, um, we will be putting our effort into airport ads, uh, airport shops, uh, um, airline shops, and airline magazines. Uh, this strategy uh, will be possible for us to do, uh, considering the nature of our business and nature of our company. Uh, many customers will be able to be in contact with Peru-related items, we believe, uh, which will have positive effect uh, on all Peru-related products. Um, just for your information, uh, before COVID-19, uh, airports and airlines uh, were the most efficient way of gathering customers in one place. Uh, for example, uh, we have about 100 airports uh, in Japan right now. Uh, and the main airports that has international flights are around seven airports. Uh, with this, within this uh, seven airports, the largest will be Narita Airport based in Chiba. Uh, I believe a lot of people have used that airport. Uh, this airport gathers 1 million people per month. Uh, Haneda Airport based in Tokyo gathers 800,000 people per month. Uh, Kanku, uh, based in Osaka, will have 800,000 customers also per month. Just this top three airports will have more than 2.6 million people uh, per month. Uh, now, please imagine these people constantly looking at Peru-related products. I think the potential is uh, sky high. As a company that has a deep relation with Peru and people in Peru, we feel the need to expand your culture and products in a way we can. Uh, we've been having a good relationship with the commercial office of Peru in Japan, and we are uh, also looking forward for the long-lasting relationship with many of the partners in Peru. Uh, hopefully, we can visit them soon in Peru, talk about uh, what we can do uh, for each other, uh, not just for business, but uh, to have more deeper connection with, uh, between the people. I think that's what uh, this business is all about. Um, thanks for listening, and that will be all what I say. Um, back to you, uh, Mr. Alberta. Thank you very much, Naoto. I think it was very interesting to know your relation that you have also with uh, Japan Airlines in the possibility that you're just looking to work more in the air airports and airline business. Uh, yeah, we agree. It's, it's very interesting. We hope also that this is going to just uh, open and start business as soon as possible. We know it's going to take some time also due to this pandemic, but I think it'll be good to try to see how we concentrate in this kind of line of business as well as in, in the e-commerce. That is also, as you have mentioned, one of the main trends that the people are just now uh, buying. Uh, we think that with the alpaca products that we have, uh, they are very comfortable, which is what the people are just looking for. And that's what Ayako was, was saying precisely. Uh, I think we have also the colors and the possibilities. With your help also, we can just work more in the design, especially for the uh, Japanese market. And I think that, um, yeah, together working, um, we, we can just try to find uh, some ways to try to promote more Peru and also uh, Alpaca del Peru brand, as well as the, uh, the Peruvian Alpaca products. Uh, now I'll pass it uh, to Sandra for the questions, and she's going to just yeah, pass to you this uh, the, the microphone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to both of you. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, Yaku and Naoto. We have some questions from our companies. The first question it will be for Ayako, Corporación Otaner. Uh, what are the top marketplaces that are selling these face masks you show us? How how can we contact these marketplaces? The marketplace is various in Japan. Uh, it's quite difficult to say where is the biggest. And all these uh, drugstore chains, of course, they have surgical masks. But at the same time, like uh, even individuals are selling masks a lot on like uh, online. And yeah, the companies who kind of invented new their original mask, they are selling it on like their online or like uh, um, crowdfunding, for example. So it's various. It's quite um, it's difficult to say where's the biggest marketplace. It, it's really the market itself is big, and the 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 biggest one is like drugstore, but they sell only the surgical masks. But what I um, shared before, it's more kind of like fashion, the mask for fashion, kind of. 
And so, so for those, I think still there are like various platforms. So not, I cannot say like uh, where's the biggest. We have a question from Pia Nitz. Uh, hello, Ayako, please. Could yeah. you tell us about the high needed alpaca yeah. pieces market in Japan? Do uh -huh. you think there's any opportunity right now? How do people appreciate alpaca versus cashmere? You know, uh, some of you may have participated from Peru moda in Asia, right? And at, this, at that time, uh, we had the feedback that many actually uh, buyers were interested in hand knit. So the hand knit itself, hand knit sweater, hand knit uh, alpaca piece itself, uh, this market, but always depends on the design or depends on uh, what you are um, trying to achieve with that hand knit. So, how can I say? Like uh, uh, basically hand knit product, hand knit item tend to become, I think, thicker and bigger and heavier. But um, that was kind of concern for the customer's mind. And also like uh, um, where can we go out with it? For example, uh, most people going to work by train in Japan and then on the train or like inside of the shops, department, stores, or, or in office, it was kind of like uh, hot um, because of these heaters. So it's outside is cold, uh, so you want to wear the sweater, but then soon uh, on the train, once you get on the train, it gets too hot. So this kind of uh, uh, things was a um, concern for the customers. But now um, uh, I think it's changing the way of working. So less people will commute probably uh, compared to before. And also people are working at home. So there is a market for hand-knit sweater. It, 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 there is a lot of value there. So, but the, the point is uh, you also need to consider like, uh, isn't it too heavy for actually wearing or like, uh, I don't know, um, in terms of um, like uh, how strong it is. So basically I don't think like uh, hand knit has like uh, demerit or like, uh, uh, yeah. So there is big market and it has lots of story. So I think if, if you can um, put the design and also the story and the functionality there, then I think there is a market. And Kashmir, is, as I, as you mentioned, um, Kashmir is huge in Japan, Kashmir, and people like Kashmir. But at the same time, of course, uh, there are alpaca materials lovers also. It's compared to Kashmir, it's small, but, um, but there is market and also people who experience the, how comfortable actually alpaca uh, materials is and how warm it is and they like it. My customers are, most of them are repeated, repeat customers. So um, it's true that Kashmir is much more popular, but, but uh, yeah, but alpaca also still quite big uh, room to grow. In Japan. Thank you. Thank you, Ayako. Uh, we have other questions from Cecilia Mauri. Could you tell us if Japan market also are looking for babies and kids hand needed clothes and organic? Uh -huh. ba yeah, baby kids, yeah, organic is for sure. Organic cotton is for sure, yes. And alpacas, uh, I have been talking about like alpaca garments for baby for kids with several uh buyers before and yeah they have interest but at the same time um in japan like uh, mothers want like uh, uh like the how can i say it's like it should be kind of practical so the babies uh kids tend to bite it right that tends to bite or leak or yeah and then so when it comes to that the 
um, the parents kind of feel um, like animal fibers is more hairy, right? Than cotton, and so they kind of prefer cotton. So, like, uh, yeah, that that was one of the main concern of the buyers. And then at the end, they kind of uh, stay with organic cotton. But, um, but like, uh, like uh, not baby, baby, but like kids or. Or like outside clothing, I think, uh, yeah, there is the possibility there. It's still quite strong organic cotton to be the main uh, material for them. But yeah, depend on the item. Yeah, we had developed some before, so the um, yeah, there is. But maybe better to have something. Um, can I say a natural color, for example? Or not not dyed, no dyed colors, or combination with cotton. And so those ideas may help. Thank you. Uh, we have further question. It's about woven. And what about alpaca coats? Could they have an opportunity in Japan market? Alpaca coat, uh, jacket. Yes. <laughs> yes. Coat, yeah, we, we find the, yeah, coat with alpaca in Japan also. Maybe um, the coat, I wonder, uh, Naoto-san may have done coat before. I have uh, personally for my brand, for my customers, I haven't uh, done with uh, alpaca coat. I would like to ask maybe Naoto-san may have we do. Uh, we do have, well, we don't have it now, but we used to. Um, and then the problem is that the Japanese winter are getting warmer and warmer. Um, I didn't need a coat last time. Um, and for people who came to Japan before in the past, uh, maybe they would realize that there are less time to be outside because Japan is just the most efficient country that, you know, uh, compared to the other world. I mean, you're going to be inside the building for a whole time. You go out to the uh, station, that's about maybe 10, 15 minutes. You ride on a train, and then you arrive on a train platform, which has a roof, uh, and which would take you to underground, and which would take you to your office directly. So... The question is, do you need the coat? And honestly, um, it's not the most trending you know, sector at the moment we have. Uh, so if we were to sell a coat, we would rather sell more of a lighter, like jackets or uh, the inside that we could wear for a cold office, which, you know, uh, tons of air conditionings are there. So um, for the coats, especially it's the chance is decreasing uh, honestly um, if that would answer a question it would yeah that's that's the answer that i have or that we have as, as jack style thank you to you both mm -hmm. it's from Pero design they want to know what percentage of alpaca is accepted for customers as a general view 100 percent alpaca or maybe combinations for with wool or polyamide what are um, the materials from my alpaca are the most selected? Wool, cotton, acrylic, others? This is only our point of view, so I can't really talk about nationwide. Uh, but of course, 100% is the most preferable, um, but it is the most costful. Uh, and as you guys know, the websites are booming. Um, that means many shops, many people selling the same item. Uh, many people uh, selling similar items. So what happens here is people start decreasing the price. And if they start decreasing the price, we're not going to be able to provide any products that, uh, that you know, that people uh, really need. Uh, and this has given us a choice or this choice that we don't really want to have, um, actually. Uh, but uh, we... 
uh, started to uh, uh, mix uh, the materials, and um, now the hundred. Well, we st we still do hundred percent alpacas mostly, um, but we um, are having uh, issues with the price points that uh, our customers need. So we are trying to um, uh, think of new products mixing the materials. So. As a question, which would be the most um, accepting, I guess, that would be 100% alpaca, but that's not going to be in future, uh, probably um, in the next I don't know, six to, to one year, six months to one year, uh, I think the ratio will change. Thank you. Uh, we have a question for you both, uh, your opinion about this. Do you think home decor products like throws, cushions will have more opportunity now after COVID-19? Or do you think the market will be recovered at the same before? I think um, they're gonna have tons of opportunity. Um, but the problem is the, is the price point. Um, as the question is, uh, I, I believe you were talking about the home furniture, right? Like the sofas or the cushions, right? Am I correct? Yes, they are talking about that, yes. Okay. Um, right now, the largest company that uh, does the home furniture is called Nitori in Japan. Um, they have a lot of stores uh, in a lot of famous stations uh, where people gather. Uh, they have tons and tons of products that are so affordable or cheap. Um, and if you try to change, you know, your, your, your design or how your, your room looks like, um, I think you're going to need a lot of uh, materials. Like if you're going to change the sofa color, you're going to change the rugs. If you're going to change the rugs, you're going to change the curtain colors. So when you try to change things at your home, you're going to need mass amount of um, products to, uh, to start with. And in order to do that, it's going to be, you know, costful. So you would really go to a, to a place where you could buy things cheap, which is Nitori. Um, and they have a good quality, well, decent quality uh, compared to price. So uh, what I'm trying to say is you're going to have a lot of chance, but not in that sector. You're going to have to be reaching out to the people who are willing to spend um, which is, uh, I guess, a, a company that gathers a certain amount of customers that have certain amount of salary per or annually. Um, maybe we could be at um, help with that because uh, we, as a Japan Airlines uh, customer holder, they do have a lot of money um, and they do have a lot of time right now. Uh, so we are looking to... Um, sell some of the, those uh, home furniture products also. We're looking into those um, companies right now. So if you're, you know, um, trying to have a, a contact in Japan, maybe Mr. Albareda can give you uh, um, my email address and maybe we could talk about that later. Um, so my answer is yes, you, you're gonna have a lot of opportunities and, and I think you'll do well, but you're gonna need a specific um, strategy in Japan in order to do that. That's my uh, answer. Thank you. Uh, if you both can talk about alpaca food uh, for the fashion and home decor, how do you think this product can be accepted in the Japanese market? Sorry, Sandra, could you, could you repeat? Yeah, no, they're talking about the, the four, alpaca four. If it's oh. possible to use it in, as application in different kinds of garments and also in some of the home decor. My point of view, it's it's kind of personal. My point of view is that, um, see, I have new is this doll, stuff doll with uh, alpaca fur, but not with clothing or interior, like uh, cushions. Um, for the dolls, it's quite... Uh, it's been very uh, successful. It's people like it, but as you all know, that this fashion industry is going away from any far, kind of. So um, I wouldn't uh, recommend to use it for clothing 
uh, or could be even uh, like a pillowcase. But however, um, if you can prove, th this is also I have been telling for many years, I think, um, if you could prove where that far come from and how by selling this far, what who uh, can have like uh, like uh, support for living, for example, that's I think um, most of the case of using what why in Peru you keep using alpaca far because that is very very important even to use far for the whole this supply chain especially for the farmers, right, alpaca farmers. So if you can prove whole this story with probably with certificate, it might help. And in Japan, if we know the story behind, um, even other countries, they are like boycotting any far. But I think in Japan, people might, people actually want to support it. And so for, for the short term, I wouldn't suggest to use for fashion. However, if you can prepare all this kind of like, uh, what, why you need this um, alpaca far for Peru and for the people in Peru, then I think there is still a chance. Oh, what do you think? Not some. Likewise, um, and just to add on that, it's, it's all about what you could prove. It's all about <laughs> what your background is. And it, the last, the, the important, very important thing it, that we have in the last stage here is who actually presents that to the world. Um, Japan has a very uh, big issue of trusting people, actually. Um, so they always try to look for a big company. Uh, they always try to look for a company that has, I don't know, some kind of name that they know, or, or if they see some new company, they, they're very cautious about um, doing business or buying from them. So uh, the very much important thing is that it, if you have a certain amount of people that you want to reach out to with certain things that you, you know, have as a product, you really need to choose that company who you partner up with uh and you really need to show that or well, maybe proof is not a good word but th that's very important um as ayako said the certificate uh and how you could back up your your story so it you know that that three steps is very important to um to more to do actually uh, any business in Japan. So that's that's my opinion. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, alpaca accessories, uh, Ayako, Naoto, what do you think about it? Because we, need, we would like to know as, as we have the scarves and we have different kinds of products done uh, for accessories uh, uh, with uh, within the clothing. So uh, I don't know how you see it. I think accessories are uh, a good um, sector. Um, from now because they can't go outside, uh, but they still want to be fashionable. Um, I think that really uh, keeps you going. Like having no social interaction with anybody is, is a stressful moment for anybody. Uh, but, you know, if you could find a hobby or if you could uh, find, uh, you know, the accessories that you like and you put them on, you take a picture, you post them on SNS. Or, uh, you know, since the the world right now, I mean, in Japan right now, uh, economy is slowly going to probably move uh, from June. So I think it's, um, people would want to buy uh, the products that they actually never, you know, experienced or uh, uh, really never had as a hobby. Um, so it's, I think they have a chance, um, but as I said, the accessories and, and products like that are, there's so many in Japan right now from all over the world. And um, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, potential if you could really explain um, why it's good to have accessory products from Peru. So 
um, I, I think you're gonna have tons of tons of uh, of uh, opportunities from um, maybe next year, not not maybe this year, uh, but uh, yeah, um, and, and we we are looking into actually accessories right now um, for the catalog orders. So uh, yeah, we're we're trying to uh, strengthen that uh, sector also. Yeah, I think now to sunset accessories. It is a uh, uh, stay or even going bigger, I think. And it, like now, people appreciate more for going out time and also going in nature in future, in near future, I think. So they have opportunity to wear like hat or gloves or scarves. So, but then as uh, now Chan said, there are tons of uh, competition here, and then many many products. So. Yeah, but the accessories it, uh, itself will be, I think, have potential. Yeah, big market. Okay. Thank you, Ayako. Thank you, Moto. Unfortunately, we don't have more time for more questions. We appreciate your time and your information. Uh, thank you, Fernando. And thank you to all the participants. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you very much, uh, both of you. And, y muchas gracias a todos los que han participado dentro de este webinar. Estamos en contacto. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Bye. Thank you very much. Take care then. See you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you.